Now before I go ahead and get the wheels into primer and paint, one modification that I am going to do has to do with the refinement of the surface of the wheel itself. Now on the real T34 with this pattern of wheel, these wheels were made from heavy gauge steel stampings. On the Armortech kit, these pieces here are comprised of CNC'd billet aluminum turnings. And because of this fabrication procedure, you'll see small little lathe marks on the inside portion here of the well. Now, in order to improve it, I go ahead and put the piece on the lathe, and with some sandpaper, I go ahead and remove the tooling marks to this nice smooth finish that I have here. And paired side by side, you can see the difference in surface. Now this is a procedure that should only be done if the person has the tooling and the experience required in order to do something like this. If not, again you can just simply build the kit out of the box with the st standard wheels and it should handle pretty well for you. Now in order to do this procedure, I'm going to be utilizing that of my lathe. The lathe is a simple way of doing it because it also speeds up the process as opposed to just hand polishing this piece by hand with some emery cloth or some sandpaper. That is doable, but it is going to take you quite a bit of time. The lathe simplifies and speeds up this manner immensely. I'm going to take the wheel, put it into the, the headstock, making sure that the piece is absolutely square flush with the with the chuck. If it's canted in any slight way, it's going to add a bit of wobble and it is not only a rougher surface to sand on, again, even type of sanding, but it's also a safety risk as well and it's definitely something you don't want to encounter. Right now, the wheel is not on centered and you can see it wobbling right now. I'm going to go ahead and adjust it so that the wheel is on in a nice true manner, like the way you see it here. Now as for the actual sanding itself, this is going to be done with 120 grit sandpaper. I have a little piece here in my hand that was used on some of the other wheels, and you will be going through these little pads pretty quickly. So when you're sanding it, once you feel like the sandpaper is no longer efficiently removing the material in a quicker manner, just simply toss it and get another piece. Sandpaper comes in a huge little stack from your local hardware store so you should def with one packet you should easily have enough to do the entire T34 in fact I use basically this whole sheet here for the basically the whole tank now before I go ahead and start the procedure I want to point out several safety concerns as this is a somewhat risky procedure and is definitely one that again should only be done by somebody that has a lot of experience with working with tools like this First of all, this piece here is going to be spinning at sufficient speed, so you're going to have to be very cautious with your hand that's going to be in this section over here. Second of all, the tailstock and the tool post have to be all the way removed to the furthest extremity of the lathe as possible. This would ensure that, you, they don't, that they don't get hung up on your arm if you have to move suddenly or if it gets God forbid, if it gets caught on something, you don't want it tangling up on the tailstock. It's definitely going to ruin your day. Another thing to keep in mind, when it comes time to actual sanding, you need to have your sandpaper. It's best to have it in a position that is not, that is actually going with the turning. You don't want to do it up here. You don't want to do it on the side. For me personally, I like doing it by resting my hand onto the lathe section itself which gives me support and then from there I could put my pressure onto the piece when spinning and the sanding can occur. Now another safety concern to watch out for is this procedure here does emit a lot of filings and these filings are very fine particulate and can be airborne. Because of this I, I'm currently actually wearing a respirator and the respirator is absolutely required as again you don't want this stuff in your lungs it's just not beneficial in any which way. In addition to the respirator, a set of safety glasses is also basically mandatory equipment, but that's true for just about all machine tools in general. Now, since this sandpaper has been used on several wheels, it is mostly worn out to a certain extent, but there's still a good portion here in the center. This is gonna be the portion I'm going to be using to complete the sanding of this wheel. I'm gonna do this in real time. I'm gonna turn on the lathe and start the sanding process. 
Now this here is the lathe that maxed out speed. I'm gonna go a little bit slower than that, just for basic safety reasons. It, now this isn't a race, this isn't a rush job. Just go at a nice steady speed, and the sanding, well, the sandpaper should do the job for you. Now you don't want to put too much pressure on the piece, as this does add a lot of build of heat, and the heat can burn your hand, which can cause problems as well. Which is why another reason to, is I insulate the piece by folding it several times. It gives you a little bit of a barrier from the turning piece and your hand. Now I'm going to carefully go in here and start removal of the machine marks. Also, as another safety trick, you don't want to stand directly in line of the spinning wheel of death for apparent reason. If the wheel for some odd reason gets loose from its chuck, it will become a projectile and you do not want to be standing in front of it. Currently and all the time when I'm doing these lathe tutorials, I'm always standing to the side of the spinning object. You just add a little bit of pressure, let the sanding do its thing, and you can visually inspect once the tool marks are removed. I'm pretty much at the point now where I need to be. I'll turn off the lathe, remove the piece from the chuck, get rid of any filings on the inside, and there we have the wheel with its tool marks now completely sanded away. Is at this point now the wheel can head off into painting with the remainder of the ones that are found on the table. And here are the wheels going through their assembly procedure. What was done before the filming of this take was that the coat of primer was added to all the components and on the inside portions here of the wheels including that of the hub we can see that of the base coat that was added. Once the base coat is dried on these components here it's then time to assemble the wheel housing. Now as for this procedure, this is all done stock armor tech with the stock supply fasteners and the fasteners mount on in a very quick and efficient manner that is also very realistic to that of the real T34. Now the only addition that I made was that of this center ring that we have here. This ring here is not present on the armor tech kits, but it is seen on the real T-34s. This ring here is actually a perforated washer, and its intent is that it's only found on the portion of fasteners which secure the wheel rims to that of the center hub. With this washer, it helps distribute the load of the fasteners across a wider space, thus giving for a stronger bond with that of the mounting fasteners. These pieces here are, are all scratch built and are made from sheet styrene. I'm going to go ahead and describe how to actually fabricate these rings on your own in order to get this bit of detailing on your tank. To fabricate the washer, the washer is going to be comprised out of a piece of sheet styrene. This plastic card here is approximately one millimeter thick or more than likely somewhere around the sixteenth of an inch thick range. As for the method of cutting it, this is going to be utilizing that of the drill press. For this type of procedure, the drill press is basically mandatory and I wouldn't even think about attempting something like this doing it freehand. Now for the tool which will actually be doing the cutting, I'll be using that of a hole saw. Now these hole saws here are nothing fancy, they come in a assorted set and these are basically found in just about every single hardware store. Now. Because it's a washer, you have to keep in mind that you have two diameters you're going to be working with. You have the main exterior diameter, which is that of, of course, this hole saw, but you also have a very somewhat large inner diameter. Now, this can be very tricky to fabricate if trying to do it freehand. You may try to drill it out and then with a bit, either on a drill press or even on a Dremel, try to 
widen the hole, but this will lead to nothing but disaster. In order to cut the piece, it's actually going to be done in one felt swoop. And the way that this is done is via a second hole saw. Now, this hole saw here is also one that comes with the assorted set. And the way, it, as it, it turns out, both of these sizes here are the exact sizes needed for that of this component. So, it's a very simple piece to actually make. Now, in order to cut them out in the exact same time, the way this is done is that with the supplied center drill bit, you first line it up and mount it as you would normally on the first small hole saw. Now, normally, if you were just cutting a hole, you would just thread this fastener on, put this in your tool, and start the cutting. But for the washer, I'm actually going to double this up by putting the two pieces in place. They do have an indexing hole that lines up. When I tighten the fastener on now, I could cut two holes with one procedure. With the bit fully mounted into the drill press, I can now start the cutting. Now the plastic guard is going to be held with my hands and I'm going to just simply lower the cutting tool head and, and have the saw blade work its magic. You want to go nice and slowly until the piece cuts through the plastic card. Now, when I take the hole saw out of the drill press, you can see how within one motion, I went ahead and cut two discs. And there we have the washer ring now with not only being cut to its outer diameter size, but its inner diameter circle has also been cut out and is perfectly centered in the main washer ring. It is at this point here where I could clean off and deburr the, these rough little plastic filings which were left over from the cutting process. This will be done with that of an X-Acto knife as well as some sandpaper. Once the piece has been deburred, it's then time to mark the locations for that of the fasteners. The way this is done is I take the main road wheel and I go ahead and I center the ring as much as possible. Now, the hole for the inner diameter is slightly larger than that of the hole that's on the rim for that of the hub. Now, this is actually as per the real vehicle. So, when it comes time to marking it, you just want to go ahead and Basically eyeball the washer till it's as equal as it can be. To which then you put, you hold the washer in place and with a pencil, you just make indentations for where the holes need to be drilled. Of course, after the holes are marked, just simply drill them out on a drill press with a bit that's the same size or just about larger than the actual fasteners that are, that are going to be used for the mounting. Being plastic, the drill bit should make very short work of the material. After the burrs from the drilling are removed, the washer is now completed and ready for the wheel to be mounted. Now as for the mounting and assembly of the wheels, there are some steps that the builder needs to keep aware of. Namely, has to do with that of the orientation of all of the fasteners as well as the hub itself. Starting with the rims, you'll notice that there are two rows of fasteners on these T34 wheels. We have here the inner row and the outer. The inner row is what mounts the wheels to that of the center hub and the outer row is what mounts the two rims of the wheels together. This is 
in much the same format as it, is on, as it is on the real T34 and is a very nice feature that the kit does have. Also, the kit is very well engineered in that all of the holes will will appropriately line up and the fasteners will go on without a hitch. The wheels do go together very quickly and effortlessly. Now, where the builder needs to pay attention has to do with the orientation of all these three components with that of the fasteners. I say this because the pieces can be installed in reverse and if that is done the builder is going to have to undo all the fasteners, reverse everything in order to get them assembled in the appropriate way. So again attention needs to be exhibited. Now as for the holes what I first like to do is I like to line up the holes in their appropriate locations. Like I said before with due to the geometry of these pieces here if you line up the holes you'll notice that the holes for the inner diameter line up, but the ones for the outer don't. This isn't a cause for concern and any redrilling needs to be done. What There is a sweet spot that these wheels need to be positioned in order for the holes on both of the diameters to line up. The way I do this is I first line up the first row. If you could see the, there is a there is light coming through to the other side. And if I just simply rotate the two halves until eventually I get to the point where both of the holes line up like the way you see it here. Once this is done, the holes are now indexed and I carefully put the wheels down in a way where I can easily grab them and put them onto the center spindle. Now as for the center spindle, the orientation that needs to be addressed with this is that there is an outer and inner portion of these wheels. The, the way to to identify which side is which is that if we recall the outer one has a threadings that are integrally machined on the inside for that of the insertion of the hubcaps. If I peel off this protective layer of masking tape you'll see here the threads in question. This here these threads are only found on the exterior portion of the wheel and once found you now have the orientation. I, if we notice I put this on the table with the thread portion pointing up is at this point now I can grab my fastener I'm going to grab the bottom wheel if you notice I did not rotate them at all keeping them as straight as possible I insert the fastener again same thing with the center hub I did not rotate it this is indeed the top portion and I'll put this one inside with the top portion pointing up again the holes line up absolutely perfectly I then take the other wheel and again did not rotate it and so the holes are again lining up. Take my washer, slide it onto the piece, take a little drop of red Loctite, which is also by the way is important not to invert this as the red Loctite will make removal of these fasteners once set, very problematic, and just a little bit of hand tightening. Now you don't want to tighten it all the way as you want to get the other fasteners on so you can tighten them all in order. Okay with the first one done it is now time to do the same thing with the other one. Now I'm going to put this fastener directly across from the one I just installed and everything should just simply line up. Again a little drop of Loctite is going to be used. Thread this guy on here. Now if we notice the on the T34 road wheels we have the threaded portion of the fasteners facing outward towards the outside of the tank. This is as per the real vehicle. And if this is inverted this would be something that would be inaccurate and would have to be addressed by the builder which is why I said before you don't want to invert any of these parts. Okay, now that these are tightened I'm going to go ahead and insert the other fasteners but before I do with the, I'm going to put the wheel on the drill press and just drill out a little bit of the area where the plastic is as even though the holes were properly lined up many times when it when you drill the hole they shift slightly during the drilling process and are very close to where they need to be but are slightly off. It's not an issue but when it comes time for mounting the fasteners it would be a lot more of an easier task to simply just bore out these sections more thoroughly so that the fasteners can simply slide on. Again this is done on the drill press. And here again is the wheel on the drill press. I'll turn it on. Now I'm not going to drill all the way through, just a little bit on the surface. 
if the holes are slightly askew, the drill bit will automatically remove the lead amount of material for the bit to index with the hole that is integrally drilled into the aluminum rim. Since the plastic is softer than the aluminum, the plastic will eat away before any material is removed from the aluminum. And now with the material removed, the holes are perfectly indexed, and I can continue with the fastener mounting. This will be done to both the, the inner diameter and the outer diameter. Now as for the outer diameter, obviously this is just going to be mounted out of box with no mods necessary.